Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about is the difference between CPI and GDP. So this is the big idea. You see our aggregate demand to price level and the real GDP. Our aggregate demand has shifted it out, which means there's growth. Now we need to know, is that because increase in price or is that because of a... Uh, increase in quantity now if it's an increase in quantity yes that's what we want we want our growth to be because of quantity but if our increase is because of price we have a problem called inflation so there's two ways to check there are two specific ways to check if our growth is because of increase in price meaning we have inflation or because we have an increase in quantity meaning that we're productivity our productivity is growing okay so let's look at this here so there are two ways are one way is to look at the entire economy as a whole that's the gdp deflator or we could look at the economy and look at uh, specific goods and prices now in general uh, the gdp deflator and the cpi are two different ways of measuring the inflation so which one is better uh, it depends on the situation and the accuracy of the data that you could collect now the gdp deflator takes the market equilibrium so we could say price quantity for the aggregate uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve so d and this is let's scoot it over a little bit left okay so this is the market equilibrium for the aggregate supply and aggregate demand okay so what we have here is let's make this 18 as well so what we have here is the market equilibrium for one year the price could be uh, let's say four and the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied is equal to 20 okay so at this market equilibrium the the GDP the total GDP is 80 okay that's for the year 2000 okay but maybe in 2010 uh, the price, the equilibrium may be at uh, four, and the uh, the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied, the equilibrium has changed to 25. Okay, so now just by eyeballing, just by looking at this thing, we can see that between the years 2000 and 2010, the equilibrium price is four, which means they stayed constant. That the growth from 80 to 100 the growth was was because of increase in quantity okay so again we're using the gdp to look for inflation so a hundred percent of this because there was no price increase was because of a, a growth in quantity okay so that's the that's what a society wants right here okay but realistically and let's delete this to get things less confusing what really happens is the the society the price times quantity four times 20 but in 2010 the the price changes the price changes to five okay now we have a new a new market uh equilibrium in the year 2010 okay so to calculate to see how much of our growth so this is four times 80 4 times 20 is 80, and this is 5 times 25, which is 125. We want to see how much of this growth from uh, between 80 and 125 is because of, uh, of, of increase in quantity and an increase in price. Okay, So this is how we calculate it. To calculate that, we look at the nominal GDP compared to the real GDP. And the nominal GDP divided by the real GDP gives us the GDP deflator method that will tell us the, the uh, price level, 100, and how much it inflated between 2000 and 2010. So looking at the nominal GDP, we multiply 4 times 20, which is the 2000 year, to get 80. Then the nominal GDP, again, is at that, at that, that specific year, that price, uh, 5 times 25 the, for 2010 is 125. Okay, Moving to the real GDP, the real GDP is different from the nominal GDP because it uses the base year price in both columns. So you can see that by the red 4 here. So the real GDP uh, 
the real GDP of 2000 is four times 20 equals 80 because 2000 was the first year. There was no year before that. It always uses the base year. 2000 is the base year. In 2010, it uses the base year price, the four, it doesn't change, times 25 to give us the 100. Okay, so now we have nominal GDP and real GDP. So to calculate the GDP deflator, we take uh, the nominal GDP for 2000, the base year, 80 divided by 80 times 100 equals 100. Then we take the GDP deflator of 2010, which is the nominal divided by real, which is 125 divided by 100 times 100 give us 125. So you can see here that that although growth went from 80 to 125, comparing these two, 100 and 125, you can see that 25% of that growth was because of an increase in price. Okay, that so the inflation rate is 25%. Okay, good, very good. So now we have, this is the, re, the GDP deflator way of calculating this inflation, which is 25%. Let's make it a little larger. Okay, and delete this. And this is the CPI, which stands for consumer, consumer, where's my C? There it is, consumer price index now this is a more involved measure method of check of, of measuring inflation because what it does is it goes into the economy it chooses 600 goods in this case I only choose three because 600 would take me all the way all the way all the way all the way down here and I could keep going forever so it chooses only 600 goods in the economy that people uh, might use so but in this case I would choose bread cheese and uh, housing uh, the goods that people buy then CPI assigns a weight they give a survey to people to see how much of that specific good do they buy with their expenditures so in this case pe the people that they uh, the the survey that they sent out 34 percent of that population uh, spent uh, money on bread. They spent 34% of their income on bread. So that meant, let's break this down all the way. Uh, I put an index here. If I have, if my total income is $15,000, hypothetically, uh, my, my expenditure on bread would be 0.34 times 15,000. Okay. 0.34 times 15,000, and that would give me uh, exactly how much I spent on bread. So that would give me what I spent on bread. The 15,000, uh, as an economy, the people that they interviewed, 30, they spent 34% of their income on bread. So that means if the income was $15,000, $15,000, they would spend 34% uh, or 5,100 on bread. 24% uh, or 3,600 on cheese and 42% uh, of their 15,000 or 6,300. So, yeah. So, again, this number here is simply uh, 6,300. Uh, oops. 6,300 uh, divided by the 15,000. And you can see that'll give me my 42%. So that's what the consumer price index, it gives me a percentage of what people uh, expend on each type of goods and services. So it, so it gives, so what happens is comparing the consumer price index to the GDP deflator, both of them calculate uh, inflation rates. This is our inflation from the GDP deflator. Uh, but the consumer price index uh, goes deeper and that goes into the economy and accounts for 600 goods and services. OK, so once we find out the weights, we ask, uh, we go to firms and we find out how much of the bread costs in 2000. So this is 20. This is 300 cheese. Uh, uh, we're assuming tingue. And this is 23,000 uh, tingue per month. Let's just say this is the consumer price index for Kazakhstan. And all this is in tingue. So without the weights, the first calculation I'll make is without the weights. Uh, so this will be, 
I didn't I didn't incorporate these yet. I just simply added this together. Two hundred plus three hundred plus uh, twenty three thousand gives me this, and I added it for two thousand ten. You could obviously see that there the prices has went up, signaling inflation. So the CPI base, I take this number divided by this number times one hundred. That gives me my base CPI of one hundred. Then I want to see how much price is raised. So I take this number two thousand ten divided by the base. Uh, uh, sum of baskets and multiply it times 100 so I can see now that the inf uh, that the difference is 2 percent 2 percent that means between 2000 and 2010 the inflation rate was 2 percent so you can see the GDP deflator it also calculated uh, it calculates the same type of percentage. It calculates a base year GDP for deflator that gives you 100. This also gives you a CPI base that equals 100. Then it has a deflator that accounts for the increase from one year to the base year, 125. And this also accounts for the new year to the base year. So it gives the new uh, indices, 102. You compare the two, 100 to 102, and you compare 100 to 125, and you can see that this increase is 25%, and this increase is 2. Now, they, would be the, they may or may not be the same percent increase, but I'm using different numbers here. This is for the entire economy, and this is just based on three goods within one economy. That's the difference between consumer price index and the GDP. Now, the next part, what we do is uh, what we can do is account for the weights and recalculate uh, the same recalculate the same uh, procedure, just including the weights. So in this case, let's change this really quickly. OK, so the last one is uh, I could count calculate a weighted CPI, which I take. Uh, 20, the 2,000 year, times 34%, that gives me 6.8. 300 times the 24%, that gives me 72. 23,000 times the 42% gives me 9,660. I sum these up, and I do the same, uh, assuming that the weights aren't changed between years. Multiply it through here, and I get it here. I sum these up. I have my base CPI as before. I take the original divided by the original times 100. That gives me 100. And then I compare the new divided by the old uh, the CPI base. And that gives me 102. And comparing the 102.3 to the 100, I have a, uh, instead of a 2% inflation rate, I have a 2.3% inflation rate. Notice that these two are slightly different because of, yes, the weights okay so what i want you to get out of this is uh the C there are two different ways that an economy uh can can check can test uh to see if their growth is because of growth in productivity and growth because of a uh, change in price or inflation one of these methodologies is the gdp deflator and the other one is the consumer price index where they go into the economy and start asking more questions. Uh, which methodology is better? Well, that depends on uh, what information is available. Uh, both of them require uh, surveys into the economy to see uh, what's there and what's not. So in a developing country, you can imagine how hard it is to go to different villages and ask them uh, what, how much of their percentage of their income do they spend on bread, cheese, and housing. Uh, or you could imagine uh, going into uh, uh, even even an industrialization like the United States and interviewing people at home when maybe they're working or they, they don't feel like doing a survey or uh, certain things. So this is a survey that is subject to inaccuracy. And a deflator is also uh, subject to inaccuracy, um, mainly because it's looking at the entire economy and not asking specific questions like the consumer price index. So they are both two methods of, of uh, seeing if the aggregate demand growth is because of uh, increases in price, which means inflation, or changes in quantity. Thank you.